ointment with fear. This is your storyteller, the man in black. Here again to bring you another placid evening in our Far Side series, Appointment with Fear. Loss of memory, the eerie darkness which closes down on the brain, is a subject which has often amused me, and that is why I have brought a guest tonight, Dr. Gideon Fell, the celebrated schoolmaster turned detective, to tell you about the Barton case. There sits Dr. Fell himself, all 20 stone of him, with his four chins, his bandit's moustache, his eyeglasses on the broad black ribbon, his face fiery with controversy. And when he tells you about the Barton case, as he told it to me, we trust we shall keep our promise to bring you... An appointment with fear. The Clock Strikes Eight by John Dixon Carr. Produced by Martin C. Webster. The Barton case, sir, was a grim business. I saw the last night of it. I saw what the human soul can endure without quite going mad. And I have no wish to see its like again. For I ask you to imagine yourself in the position of that girl, Helen Barton. Suppose, just suppose, that you wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. You wake up as though from a nightmare with a feeling you've been asleep a very long time. The room is cold and nearly dark, with the faint glimmer of a fire almost out. Slowly, very slowly, you begin to realize it's a room you've never seen before. That fact, above all, strikes at you through a mist of fear. There's a queer atmosphere like old stone and disinfectant, and no sound at all in that dim room, except... Uh, uh, What is it? What was that noise? Now, now, lean back in your bed, my dear. It's all right. That's good advice, Miss Barton. You take it easy, lad. I think I must have been dreaming. You were having a nightmare, but it's all right now. Nothing's going to hurt you. Not yet. Be quiet, Anna. No offense, I'm sure, but some people who occupy this room get on my nerves. I I don't want to seem stupid. I, I know there must be some explanation, but I, I don't understand this. Understand what, my dear? Where am I? And how did I get you? And who are you? Now, please, miss, whatever else you do, don't start that all over again. Start what all over again? Telling us you've lost your memory and don't even know what your name is. Are you insane? Of course I know what my name is. I'm Helen Barton. Well, it's a mercy you admit that at last. At last? I've never spoken to you before in my life. Where am I? Why on earth is it so cold? It's pretty hard to be cozy here in the middle of December. Did you say December? That's right, that's right. The 18th of December. You're you're fooling me. You're playing a trick on me. My head feels queer and I want to cry. I won't. Could could we have some lights? Of course, straight away. It can't be December, I tell you. That's impossible. It was only yesterday and all the flowers were out. I was going up to see Philip. That's it. I was going up to see Philip. Philip? Who? Philip Gale, the man I was going to marry. It's coming back to me now. It was yesterday and I started up to see Philip. Oh, for heaven's sake, miss. Be quiet, Hannah. And don't turn her those lights yet. Oh, she's having us on, Hannah. This girl's shaking all over and she doesn't know where she is. <laughs> now, miss. Now, listen to me. I'm going to sit down on the bed beside you. Mm. Now, now, just take my hands and hold them. 
Right. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? I've got something to tell you. Is it about Philip? It is about him. Yes. In a way. I want you to keep tight hold of my hands. You see, Miss Barton, this is Maidhurst Prison. <laughs> steady now, steady. I'm still steady. dreaming. I must be. It was the end of August and I, I started out to see Philip. You can't mean I'm in prison. Now listen, my dear. I'm afraid it's worse than that. Worse than that? Look over there. You see where there's a little bit of fire in the grate? Well, and paper on the wall and pictures and a carpet on the floor. Why can't you come out straight and tell her? They're going to hang you in the morning, Miss Barton. This is the condemned cell. Sudden shock, the prison clock smote on the shivering air. But I won't quote that any further. I have too vivid a memory of sitting up that night with Colonel Andrews, the governor of the prison. It was in our little office, with the lampshade tilted so that I could see his face. And he said, I hate executions, loathe them, can't sleep the night before. If you hadn't offered to come here and save my life, I... This is a strange time, sir, to talk of saving lives. It's no good being sentimental about the thing. That's the law. I didn't make it. But I gather you're not exactly happy about this case. I'm not, and that's a fact. Mind you, there's no doubt whatever about the girl's guilt. Hmm. I am gratified to hear it. But if only she'd confess. Most of them do, you know. They confess to you? To me or to the hangman. Sometimes I wish I had any job in the world but mine. If only the girl would confess. If only she'd just stop this nonsense about not remembering. Not remembering what? Not remembering how she shot Philip Gale. Not remembering anything, even her own name. Total amnesia, covering a crime. Do you mean to say that a woman suffering from loss of memory can be tried and sentenced to death? No. Not if she really has lost her memory. But this amnesia defense was a fake. You're quite sure of that? Oh, naturally. The judge would never have allowed it to come to trial if he hadn't been convinced she was shamming. Even then, she might have got off with a life sentence or even with manslaughter if it hadn't been for the nature of the crime. She didn't cut anybody up, I hope. No, no, no. It was almost as bad. She shot a man who raised his hands and begged for mercy. That completely damned her in the eyes of the judge. And yet, you have doubts. Tell you I haven't any doubts. And in any case, it's it, it, none of my business. How has she acted since she's been here? Oh, model prisoner. Ah, but I wish she'd stop this business of seeming to be in a daze. It's, it's getting on my nerves. Nice girl, too. I knew her grandfather. She lived near here? Yes. Born and bred in Maidhurst. She got mixed up with a thoroughgoing swine named Philip Gale. Mad about him. Wouldn't care a word against him. And he... He threw her over for a woman with money. I see. Yeah. He had a bungalow on White Rose Hill. She went up there one Sunday afternoon. Alone? Yes. Herbert Gale, Philip's brother, heard them screaming at each other. He ran in to see what was wrong. Philip was trying to chase the girl up. She grabbed a thirty-two revolver out of a table drawer and told Philip to put up his hands. Huh. Uh, well, that scared him. He did put up his hands. Then she shot him dead. And went down in a fit. And afterwards? Afterwards, she couldn't remember. Couldn't remember anything? Pretending she didn't even recognize her own family. She said, who is Philip Gale? And you hang her tomorrow morning. Yes. Without even hearing her side of the case. She found it, man. There's, there's no doubt about the evidence. Are you sure? She killed Philip Gale. Gale's brother, Herbert, saw her do it. This hypocrisy about... About not remembering... Emotional shock could do just that, you know. She wasn't so emotionally shocked that it disturbed her head. She drilled in clean through the heart at 15 feet. The bullet entered in a dead straight line through coat, waistcoat, shirt and heart. Ha! You could have run a pencil through the holes. Now, now don't sit there popping out your cheeks and waving a cigar at me. I'm, I'm only trying... Tell me, Colonel Andrews. 
Aren't you talking to convince yourself? No. Suppose that the girl is telling the truth. Suppose she has lost her memory. I tell you... All right, you don't believe that. But suppose it. And then, suppose in some black hour just before the hangman comes that her memory returns. Don't talk rubbish. Sir, I have lived long enough to know that mental suffering is the cruelest form of suffering on this earth. Imagine yourself in that position. You come out of a daze into what you thought was a safe and pleasant world. You don't know where you are. You don't know what's happened. You only know that when the clock strikes eight... They are going to take you out and hang. Did you hear that? Yes. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes. It isn't possible. I very much fear it is. Sometimes, you know, we... We have to use drugs. Drugs? Yes. Then we take them to the execution shed. It's only a short distance, and we try to get it over in a matter of seconds, but sometimes they... They can't walk. Yes, yes, what is it? Oh, beg pardon, sir, but I thought I'd better get you. For the doctor or for the chaplain or both. What's the matter with you, man? You're fine as a ghost. Can't help that, sir. I've been a warder in this place for a matter of 15 years, but I never knew anything like this. It's the upstairs room, I suppose, Mr. Yes. Uh, Miss Barton. Yes, sir. Hysterical? Uh, yes, sir. She says, well, she says she remembers now. I see. She's carrying on something awful, sir. That ain't all. She she claims she never done it. What's that? She claims she never killed Mr. Gale at all. Never killed? That's all, Harris. Dunga. Yes, sir. Any other disturbances in the building? Well, sir, they're a bit restless in uh, wing A. Ah, well, that's, uh, that's usual. Yes, sir. And there's a bloke outside the prison, I mean, who keeps hanging about in front of the main gate. You can see him by the street lamp. First he'll take a few little quick steps back and forth, and then he'll run and stick his face against the bars of the gate. And uh, then he'll go back to the pacing again. Fair gave me the creeps even before this other thing. You don't happen to know who it is? It's the other Mr. Gale, sir. Herbert oh. Gale. I, I hadn't the heart to chase him away. All right, Harris, all right, all right. Go ahead, I'll, um, I'll be along in a minute. Uh, yes, sir. So the girl claims to be innocent. You heard that? Yes, I had it. What do you mean to do? Well, I'll, I'll see her, of course. It won't affect the issue. Not even if she does happen to be innocent? Well, in the name of heaven, try to understand my position. I'm dreading this interview. It's against regulations, but I... I wish you'd come along with me. If there were only well, something... Well, isn't. Now, where's that whiskey? I... I think a little stimulant... She will need the stimulant. Well, it's, a, it's a cold night. It will be colder yet. Where she's going. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't Why, do I it. Why, Miss Quiet, it's all right, my dear. It's all right. The governor and the other gentlemen, they believe you did Oh, no, no, you don't. You needn't try to fool me. Look at them over there in the corner whispering. Phil, she's lying. I heard that. You said, Phil, she's lying. But I'm not lying. I'm not. Miss Barton, you've got to pull yourself together. Please listen to me. When I first woke up, I didn't even remember Philip was dead. And then it came back to me. Yes? I, I remember standing outside Philip's bungalow on a hot day with the sun in my eyes. I heard a shot inside the bungalow. I ran into the living room and found Philip lying on the floor by the couch with his mouth open and blood on his chest. That's all I do remember. Something hit me. Something hit you? On the head, or that's what it seemed like. Please. The doctor's found no injury at your head, you know. I tell you... One moment. Miss Barton, can you forgive the intrusion of an old buffer who sincerely wants to help you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Bell. I'll try to be sensible. Now, tell me. When you arrived at the bungalow, Philip Gale was already dead? Yes. You didn't go up there to quarrel with him? No. And why should I have killed him anyway? I only went to tell him I was through. Finished. Fed up with him. I... Oh, what's for you? They haven't told you, then, that there's a witness who claims to have seen you... Sh-